down upon him from that height. In this way, you will take his life as he took your husband's life. The woman quickly changed her mind, realizing that in satisfying her need for revenge, she would also be risking her life. Now, this is an extreme example, to be sure, an extreme example of the unwillingness to forgive. But people often act this way in lesser degrees. People hold grudges. Sometimes people hold grudges for decades. People are resentful. People make spiteful remarks. Sometimes it's hard to forgive. Sometimes it's hard to love. But it is so important to love. And so Jesus gives us a command. Love one another. Though it may be hard to love, it is always important to love. Second, love is the most important way that we bear fruit for God. It doesn't matter how often we come to church. It doesn't matter how many crosses we wear around our neck. It doesn't matter how many people we talk to about Jesus. If we do not have the fruit of love, and that for our families, for our neighbors, and for people of every shape, size, color, and background, if we do not have love, no one will believe that we are followers of Jesus. What did the Apostle Paul say in 1 Corinthians, that passage that is read so many times at weddings? If I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Love is shown in action. People will not believe that we are Christians if we do not have love for each other, or if they do believe we are his followers, they will conclude that Jesus is worth following. Some years ago, there was an article in the paper. It was about a fake antenna that was on the market for cellular phones. It cost $19, and this antenna gave the appearance of the real thing, but it was a fake. It was for people who could not afford cellular telephones at the time, but didn't want anybody to know it, I guess. Well, the amazing thing about this was that more than 200,000 people bought these fake antennas. Another example of something that was fake. There was a study done at a major university. The, the subjects were shown pictures of people and then asked to rate on a scale of one to five how smart they thought these people were. The test subjects consistently thought that people wearing glasses were smarter. And overwhelmingly so. In fact, this convinced the fellow who had run the test to go out and buy himself a pair of fake eyeglasses to wear at counseling sessions. He did this, he said, so that his patients would have more confidence in him. Fake antennas, fake eyeglasses, what's next? Fake Christianity? Unfortunately, yes. From the letter of James we read, faith, if it does not have works, is dead. Faith, without being shown in action, the action of love is dead, fruitless, meaningless, fake. How do people know we are Christians? By the fruit of love that we bear. Why do they know that we are Christians by love? Because true faith results in love. Love for our families, love for our neighbors, Love for people of every shape and size and color and background. Love is the evidence of our faith in Jesus. 
But does that mean then we must force ourselves to love? Can we force ourselves to love? Forced love is an oxymoron. An oxymoron, of course, is a statement that contradicts itself. Think of words like jumbo shrimp. We hear that in restaurant ads all the times. Can something shrimpy at the same time? Or other oxymorons include mandatory option, freezer burn, random order, fresh frozen vegetables, or my favorite, government intelligence. So too, forced love isn't really love at all. But Jesus is not talking about forced love, but of love that grows out of a relationship with Him. He said, a new commandment I give you, to love one another just as I have loved you. Or as John puts it in the letter of 1 John, we love because He first loved us. Love is not something we produce. Love is something that we receive and pass on. This is one reason that Christian parents and particularly Christian mothers are so important. Psychologists tell us that a child who does not receive love will not be able to give love. On the other hand, a child who has received the proper amount of nurturing and love as an infant and a toddler will have a sense of security and trust that will last them their whole lives. And they will be able to share this love with others. And this is also true in regard to Christ's command to love. We cannot force love. We cannot manufacture love. But by living in relationship with Christ, He can fill us with His love so that it overflows to other people. We love because we have been shown love. This is my command, that you love one another as I have loved you. These words are Jesus' final instruction before He goes to the cross, His final instruction to His disciples. Brief and simple, but they say what needs to be said. Love for each other is the heart and soul of Christian living. Other people will know that we follow Jesus and they will want to follow Him too when they see that we have love for each other. And that is why Jesus said, love one another. Let's pray. In the words we just read, you tell us, greater love has no one than this, that they lay down their life for their friend. And Lord, you have called us friends, and you have laid down your life for us. And because of that, we have a future that is only, only can be described as heavenly. You have prepared a place for us out of your love, dying that we might be forgiven, rising that we might have life. Help us, Lord, to ponder your love for us and all that caused you to do. And help that love to fill us, that it may overflow to those around us, that they too may know your love. We pray this in your name. Amen. Our next hymn is from the Green Hymnal, number 439, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, 439.
Would you please rise and turn either to the screens or to the back of your bulletin as we join together in our response to the Word. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Keep yourselves in the love of God. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. Amen. Please be seated as the ushers receive our offering. I think uh, pastors were really seeing uh, people coming to them in need, and yet they maybe had a limited knowledge about the resources available for people, uh, as well as they didn't really feel like they knew what approach to take to coordinate um, some efforts around building support systems for families. And so pastors talked about that for a long time, about their frustrations with um, really being able to do anything more than Band-Aid something. Um, for families that were experiencing a need. Finally, we just decided to, to jump in, kind of into the deep end, and, and um, take a risk and um, looked for some funding, asked Faith Lutheran if they'd be willing to, to be a, a, a fiscal host, basically, um, but really making sure that all the churches were a part of development and um, building a vision around and, and goals around um, the mission, which is um, neighbors sharing the love of God through service to one another. Again, it's an opportunity for us to build links where um, people can give as well as receive, and sometimes it's the same people. So uh, it's it's just it's a great a great opportunity for people in our community. Tuesday's Table, yeah. I would also love to talk about Tuesday's Table. We really wanted 
a consistent opportunity for people um, to come together. And it was twofold, to have fellowship and have food. This shows why the name, The Link, is really appropriate. Um, in this case, the, uh, the Link is collaborating with uh, five area churches to provide a weekly meal. And what's important to note is that it's a community meal. It's not only a meal for people who may not have enough food or people who may be struggling in any way, but really a meal for anyone in our community to come together and build relationships. And that's, that's good for everyone. basically <clears throat> went in for what should have been a fairly routine surgery and uh, I guess in Dr. Wessler's words it, it wound up being a train wreck. Um, I wound up with several complications. Um, a four-hour surgery wound up being a little over a 10 hour surgery and it was followed up by another seven hour surgery and basically 75 days in the hospital and three months, you know, on a feeding tube and with my wife taking care of me 100% of the time. About two years ago, I got a call from a family that was seeking assistance. They attended Our Lady of the Lakes Church and they were referred over to the link for some help. My concerns were, you know, when you're the person going through that, you know, you're fighting and it, it's not that bad, believe it or not. I mean, it's, you know, when you're like my wife and you have to sit and watch that. And that was the most difficult thing for her. They were facing losing their health insurance at a time when having health care was critical uh, to surviving. And as we went through that, you know, you try to plan for what's going to happen and financially and everything. And, you know, when you're thinking about three to four days in the hospital and a week or two of, um, you know, just recuperation and then back to life as normal. We helped uh, really advocate on be their behalf um, in many ways. Uh, one was helping them pay some of the bills that they were facing and also writing a Good Samaritan grant to the Wilmer Area Community Foundation for part of the, good, for part of the COBRA payment and then the link helped with the other part. The worst thing that can happen in that time is you can lose your insurance and um, we had both lost our income, number one because I was sick and, it, and number two because she had to be there. She had made several decisions that um, actually saved my life and so she was unable to go and, you know, work and do what she does and you know, I, I was kind of out of it, and at that point, the Link stepped in for us, and it, it, it was a miracle. It really was. They, they took care of a couple of months, and that was what it took for us to reorganize and get things going. Um, the Link was able to financially assist the Keenans at a time in their life when financial assistance was really critical. meant the difference with us between having a manageable um, medical bill and winding up with, uh, you know, financial ruin. Today, they've returned to being productive members of our community and continue to give back and make a difference through their work and through their time volunteered in the community. And the Link is really honored to have been able to assist them at a critical time in their lives. You know, you think of a lot of different things when you're going through this and Number one, you, you know, your first phase of it is you're just, you know, trying to be alive for that next day. And, and for Rita is to try to plan and figure on what her life was going to be like without me, that had to be tough. But, um, wow. That's the worst part. I think about what I went through, it ain't nothing compared to what she did. 
But when you guys stepped in, that was great. Um, made me able to be here today and not only, you know, be alive and be here, but, you know, I, I have a lot of my whole life back. And that was, that was something that surely would have been gone without the help. Yeah. They make a difference every day, and we're happy to have made a difference in their life. I don't know. I got, I got a new perspective on life. And, and, you know, I'm going to be making pies for Dr. Wessler, and that was actually something that my mom started with him. When I lost my mom, I guess that's kind of a, every year I do this, I just go ahead and mom and I cook together a lot. And I go ahead and I make the pies for Doc, and believe it or not, it's, I'm spending time with my mom when I do that. And that's... That's pretty cool for me. I really enjoy it. I know Doc enjoys the pie, is he? <laughs> you know, there's so many stories that go along with this whole adventure that when I was at Mayo Clinic, the one I'll never forget was um, there was a doctor there, and, and you had a team of doctors. But this doctor, I, I'm not sure where he was from. I think he was from England. Uh, and he was good. And he came in, and he didn't play games, he didn't pull any punches, he just kind of told you how things were. And I'll never forget, as long as I live, after all of this stuff had gone wrong and they had just said, you know, hey, this, <laughs> this is just what's going to happen. He started to walk out of the room that I was in and he stopped and he turned, turned around and looked at me and he said, man, he said, you know, you can feel the people that are praying for you. And for a doctor that didn't know me to, to do that, that was unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't think I'd do this. Yeah. Uh, mm. Very appropriate for a day on which we're talking about love in action. So, would you rise, please?
Please join with me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, you call us from death to life, from silence to speech, to action. With these gifts, we offer ourselves to you, and with the church through all the ages, we give thanks for your saving love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for your peace, O Lord, that gift that you gave to the apostles and that you give to us too. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all who hold authority in this world, especially those who are leaders in the church, that your spirit may guide us in the ways of justice and peace and truth for the good of all people everywhere. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those whose hearts are troubled through hunger, fear, poverty, sickness, loneliness, or for whatever reason, that the love of Christ may make its home in them and fill them with peace. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, that we may love our Lord and keep his word, and may be made one with each other in Christ, in God. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your creation, men, women, children, plants, animals, the wonders of the universe, that we may all in various ways give praise to you who made us and loves us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who till the earth and for those who fish the waters to bring food to the world and for all whose hand is open to give bread to the hungry that all may enjoy the fruits of this earth. Lord, in your mercy. To these prayers we offer our prayers, especially for mothers this day, that they may be blessed and appreciated not only today, but every day. We pray for Dorothy Hislop and for her family, that you would be with them and bring them comfort. We pray for Delroy Chesnus, who has had heart problems, that you would bring healing to him. We pray for Deb Johnson, who had cancer in her tonsils and had surgery this last week. And to them we add the people for whom we pray in our hearts, who are all known to you, that you would bring to them hope and comfort and healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is number 527, All Creatures of Our God and King. We'll do verses 1, 4, 5, and 7. Go in peace, serve the Lord.